Did I ever tell you about the time um, we came back from to our university house from winter break, and uh, whoever was last out of the house forgot to put the garbage out? Yikes. It was probably me. I can't say with certainty it was me, but that sounds like something that maybe I would do. Anyway, so we came back, you know, after like a week and a half, two weeks away, and the garbage can was infested with um, all stages of insect life. Live insects, like adult insects, uh, maggots, slugs, eggs, etc., etc. So we said, well, we got to handle this. Um, my housemate came down, you know, in, into the garbage can. Like, we took the bag out, bagged it up. In the garbage can, there was still a, just a ton of, like, it was like a terrarium in there. Um, my housemate came down with, like, a bunch of household cleaners. It's a regular Steven, thank you! And uh, he poured, like, one of the cleaners into the garbage can to kill the bugs. And then he started to uncork the bleach. And I was like, buddy, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just going to pour, like, all of them into the garbage can. I'm going for it, man. Uh, just to make sure they're dead. And I'm like, you're going to create mustard gas. And he said, no, no, no. And I said, no, no, no. That's how you do it, is you just combine, like, every household cleaner. And he said, oh, okay, I didn't know. And that's the story of how I saved all of our lives. Also, what's crazy? A lot of people will hear that story and be like, that kid was dumb. He's actually not. He's like one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my entire life. Now, the scary part is that he was an engineer. <laughs> so he probably should have learned this at some point. But this should... I think it's a stupid response to that story to be like, he's dumb, that would never happen to me. The, the smart response to that story is that everybody has blind spots and that's why you need checklists and fail-safes and like other people to check your work and stuff like that. Like the billionaires in the sub? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that it's dangerous to be too smart without being the smartest person that's ever lived. Like, I, I think there's like, it's, if you'll allow me to use my education here, I think it's a bit like a Punnett square, okay? And one axis is like smart dumb, and the other axis is smart dumb. Being 100% smart is great, full stop. Being 100% dumb is really bad because you're not smart and you're probably too dumb to trust the smart people. Now the other two corners are where it gets tricky. I think it's good to be dumb smart. That's where I would put myself to be. I don't think I'm that intelligent necessarily. You could argue maybe verbal intelligence, sure. I'm not trying to insult myself. I'm just saying academically, I'm not that smart. Maybe I have good reasoning and self-awareness, but like, okay, you can keep the compliments coming. But I think I'm dumb smart. I'm dumb, but I'm smart enough to trust the people who are actually smart. That's like a, a light win, in my opinion. Probably not as good as being smart smart, but smart dumb is the danger zone. That's where you're smart, smarter than the average person, but too dumb to realize that that intelligence doesn't extend to every domain in the world. That's the scary part where you're like, I'm a good chemical engineer, so I'm like a better driver than the average person. I'm a better chef than the average person. I'm better at building a Titanic exploring submarine than the average person. I think that's where you get yourself into trouble. At some point in your life, I think it would behoove you to figure out whether you're smart, smart, in which case, keep on keeping on. Smart, dumb, which is, I think, the danger zone, or dumb, smart. Now, if you're dumb, dumb, I don't really know what to do with that, okay? That's something that's between you and, and God, all right? But I think there's a lot of people out there who are smart, dumb, who would be doing a lot better if they gave themselves over to dumb, smart. Gus Fring was smart, smart. Okay, true. Walter White was smart, dumb. Very true. Jesse Pinkman was dumb, smart. Okay, I got to think about that one. Jesse Pinkman was dumb, smart. 
By the end, maybe Jesse Pinkman was dumb smart. By the way, you are... I think you're smart smart for putting this into a Breaking Bad political compass so that it's more digestible by those of us out here who are either dumb dumb or dumb smart. So I'm elevating you to smart smart from whatever category you were previously in. Marie was smart smart? Mar Hank's wife? How smart could she be, bro? She was stealing all those little spoons. She was dumb dumb? I don't think she's dumb dumb. I don't think she does anything where I would be like, like, try, who's who's dumb dumb? I feel like Tuco, not Tuco Salamanca. No, no, no. Yeah, I feel like Tuco Salamanca is kind of dumb dumb. He was he was reckless, but he thought that he was a legend. No, that's that's smart dumb. I'm too dumb smart to keep my damn metaphor straight. <laughs> anyway, I think we got to we got to where we were trying to get. The metaphor kind of fell apart a little bit, but I think about that all the time. You know what really makes me think about that? Apologies, it's, it's self-caricature, but it's the, it's the truth. I think about that on Disney cruises all the time, whenever there's a line for something. And then people start to say things like, why would they do it like this? They should really just do it like this instead. And I'm like, really? You think like you've literally been here for a minute and these people have been in the business for 30 years and you think you've solved all their problems. Like you don't think they considered the variables that are presenting themselves. You think they were just like, let's do it in the dumbest way possible. But then they whip themselves into a frenzy. You get too many smart dumbs around each other. They're like, I know that's what I've been saying. Two idiots can have the same opinion. It happens all the time, bro. I'm sure if you actually brought it up to the staff, well, the staff would probably be like, yes, sir, we're sorry, we'll consider it. But in like the back rooms, Monka S, they'll be like, yeah, another day, another person told me how to like reinvent the process that we've reinvented a thousand times into the most optimized form. Sugar is bad. I, well, maybe, I don't know. The jury's still out on that. Editors note, the jury is not out on that. But isn't it one of the... <laughs> Excuse me, don't insult me. I'm not intelligent design pilled. I'm actually so evolution pilled that I, that it's disgusting. I don't know. This is a joke that goes too much into evolutionary sort of like psychology, which was very in vogue when I was in, you know, my last couple of years in university. Basically, part of the, I don't know if this is an explicitly stated thesis of the discipline, but the idea was, you know, a after it became scientifically sorted that evolution and you know selection is a real thing sort of almost everything uh in human behavior in the field of biology came to be viewed through an evolutionary lens so you, i don't know if it's still in vogue now but if it was you would be reading like masters uh theses that were like the, what is the evolutionary benefit of gooning you know I'd be like well Maybe evolution has selected for humans that have a higher sex drive because in, our, in the historical record, they would have produced more progeny. Like, that's what almost every single one of my senior year seminars was like. It's like, why do, why do human beings like television? Well, television means you're not hunting, gathering, or anything like that, but possibly entertainment historically, like in the prehistoric human civilization, would have led to stronger social bonds between members of the tribes, which would have led vis-a-vis uh, -vis to more fucking, which means more kids, which means better uh, chances for your genes to, you know, propagate through the next generation. And I was like, so true, so true. I don't know. There's probably like an element of truth to it to some extent. I don't know if it applies to like, I mean, if, if that could explain why society loves the Big Bang Theory, then it's the best hypothesis we got so far. Meanwhile, history majors say we know or we don't know, but who cares anyway? History is kind of crazy to me as as a lay person who is only really interfacing with the Dan Carlin model of history. Are we ever worried that eventually there's not going to be any history f to support the amount of historians out there? Like, I, I, my wife has a degree in performance of music, open parentheses, oboe, okay? So you, you, I promise you, I'm not telling you this from through the lens of like trying to be rude. 
there's too many musicians out there on planet Earth. They're producing too many people with music degrees. Not like, oh, I hate seeing them, but they're simply not enough fit in the market for the amount of people that are getting the degrees. They're graduating like 10,000 oboists a year worldwide and there's like eight orchestra spots, okay? Now you can still go to school for stuff that like, you know, it just enriches your life. But I do feel like a lot of the time, people, the, the kids that go into it are like, I'm gonna be a professional musician. And then by the time you graduate, you're like, oh fuck, people still don't really like classical music. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, Listen, I have a biology degree. It's the same thing. Nobody wants a motherfucker with a bachelor's of science in biology. I was like, I want a stable job. Let me get a science degree. Then I got it, and every motherfucker was like, not that one. Are you insane? One of the other ones. <laughs> but is, it, is that not a possibility with history as well? They keep making more history? I guess not every historian is like studying ancient Rome, huh? Like, I, I guess you could be like a history, uh, historian who's like, my field of expertise is like 1997. In many ways, I feel like maybe being a, a historian is sort of like being a classical musician. Like a classical musician, oftentimes they get into it and they're like, oh, I'm like really into, you know, like the Baroque period of music. And then they pursue that and it's not financially viable. So then they have to play like, you know, Hey, it's the music of Indiana Jones. And they look out at the concert hall and that bitch is packed. It's standing room only. And everybody in the theater is going, dun, 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 dun. and the movie's playing behind you on the background too. And you're like, what are we doing here? Is that like historians? They're like, my, my field of research is like mysticism in ancient Babylon. And then like five years down the road, you're like, fine, fucking <sighs> history of aviation in World War II. And then the people are like, yeah! Take my money, please, take my money. And then you're like, okay, that funds like three more years of me doing Gnosticism in pre-Battle of Hastings, England or something like that, right? Maybe it's something like that. I'm not touching this because I don't know what it does. All right, just off the top of the dome piece. Here we go. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kinda odd. No barking from the dog, no smog. Mama cooked the breakfast with no hog. I got my grub on, but didn't pig out. Finally got a call from a girl I wanted to dig out. Moved it up for later as I hit the dough. Thinking will I live another 24? I got a dough, cause I got a drop top. If I hit the switch, I could make the ass drop. Had to stop at a red light. Light looking in the mirror, not a jack in sight. And everything was all right. I got a beat from Kim. She can do it all night. We're just gonna keep going here, huh? That was unoriginal on top of the dome. No, no. 